Six, a constitutional right or a danger to our children. The debate over Drag Queen Story Hour coming to the Mobile Public Library in just a couple of weeks sparks outrage at City Council. Mobile transformed this iron barrel into a fluorescent rainbow. Jesus says, from the beginning, God made them male and female. Does anyone know what a drag queen is? No? We'll learn. Our world is sending our kids straight to hell. I don't care that you're a Christian. I don't care what the Bible says. Abortion can be another word for mercy. And just because you get pregnant doesn't mean you get to keep that baby. Folks gathered for an LGBTQ protest. He says, afterward, I will return and restore the fallen house of David. I will rebuild its ruins and restore it so that the rest of humanity might seek the Lord, including the Gentiles. Every single person created in the image of God. Who are the people created in the image of God? Every single human being. There's no one that has ever been created that God did not have a plan for their life. He wants to redeem humanity to himself. One of the great mistakes of the church today is that so many churches are acquiescing to pop culture and we're nuancing language and we're failing to call sin what it is and call people to repentance. We think that we're being kind, but we're not being kind when we don't show people how to repent and come to Jesus. Welcome to Babylon, where we celebrate in the name of pride, sexual preferences in public, while high priests in drag dance in public and read storybooks to children, while demanding corporations, schools, hospitals, governments, and all people to demonstrate their endorsement or affirmation of this agenda as a state-held ideology or risk losing investment dollars, government grants, personal influence, or credibility. Welcome to Babylon, where we spend an entire month celebrating a sexual religion, often funded by your tax money. We do that while painting our statues in rainbow and demanding the population affirm, accept, or bow down and show reverence to ideologies that put children at risk, women's rights on the back of the bus, and women's achievements, scholarships, and even superlatives like Women of the Year in the hands of biological males, culturally appropriating women's clothing, women's makeup, and women's opportunity. We cut up, crush, and destroy unborn and partially born babies through abortion. We do it in the name of health care, yet there is no health, nor is there care for that unborn child. It's called abortion, and it's the sacrament of a new woke sexual revolution and religion. Abortion is the sacrament. The drag queen who reads and performs in front of small children is the high priest. The rainbow flag is the cross, and you are expected to bow. Welcome to Babylon. Now listen to me. When the statue is rolled out and the pressure is turned up in your life, in your family, in your work, in your city, in your country, in your world, when the trumpet sounds at the hands of the kings of this age and of this world, and they, they demand that you bow, listen to me, Pathway. Don't bow, stand. Now we see the color, we see the, the excitement and, and the glitter in the parades, and as we do, we, we look through that and we can also see people created in, in the image of God with purpose and a plan like every single human on the face of the earth. Listen to me. Every single person everywhere is an image bearer of God created in his image with purpose and a plan. One of the really terrible things about that knowledge and about what we're facing right now is that there are particular aspects of this ideology that really have no study behind it. There's been, there's been no research, no catching up with the data to see what the impact is of, say, states like California and Washington that actually cause teachers not to share with parents that their small children are going by other pronouns and other names. That in some states right now, 
that children can begin the process of transitioning without their parents' consent. What, what is the end result of all of this experiment, this transgender experiment? And listen, this is not the same as having a sexual attraction for someone else. And let me tell you really quickly, having a sexual attraction for someone is a temptation, just like having uh, a temptation to gossip or lie or to steal. You do understand this, right? See, it's not the temptation. It's not the temptation that separates us from God. It's the disobedience to God. Do you you understand what I'm saying? Listen, if you're battling something, if you're battling something and you love Jesus, keep battling that thing and keep loving Jesus. But pastor, you don't understand I'm facing this thing. Listen, listen. Every single preacher wants to exaggerate about the crowd size of the church. How big is the church? You know what I want to tell about the membership of the church, not the attendance of the church. Somebody asked, how's the giving of the church? I want to talk about the big day. I don't want to talk about Labor Day weekend. So preachers speak evangelistically. So so some people deal in gossip. So some people deal in same-sex temptation. So some people deal in opposite-sex temptation. Listen, what matters is are we faithful to God? Do you believe that God can deliver us from every single temptation that we face? Absolutely, he can. In fact, did you know that the scripture says there is nothing common unto man that Jesus wasn't tempted with, yet he was without sin? Let me tell you, you have an advocate with the Father that faced life, the grittiness of life, and he was perfect, the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. And he's the only sacrifice that can take away to the sin of the world. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you here today. Don't get caught up in your, your ego or your pride. Don't get caught up in how you feel better about yourself than someone else. Instead, get caught up in leading people to the same Christ that has given you a seat at his table. Because there's always room for one more person at the seat, at the table that God has prepared for us, even in the presence of our enemies. How many of you would join me in saying, Pastor, I wish that everyone everywhere would know Jesus and would be loved by Jesus and also be loved by the church. Is that you today? Would you just put your hands together and let's bless God for that. But what is at the end of this great experiment? Because right now, A quick diagnosis, a short conversation, and you can be on the path to a total um, uh, transgender transition. Like Chloe Cole. Chloe Cole stood before the California State Legislature and said, listen, here in California, you outlawed vaping for kids under the age of 18. When are you going to do that for kids under the 18 when it comes to gender reassignment surgery? And she was not saying that as someone from a distance, but she was saying that as someone who had received, quote, unquote, gender-affirming care. I want to introduce you to Chloe Cole, maybe one of the most brave people in America right now. I want you to hear just a little piece of her story. I'll never have my breast back. The reconstruction will do nothing for me, and it might make things worse, actually, because I'm... I've, I've had some complications pop up this year with the grafts. They, I have to cover them up, them up with bandages or else they, they'll, I don't know what's going on with them. I tried to consult my surgeon about it and she didn't really, didn't really, didn't really investigate. He gave me advice that made my, the complications worse even and actually temporarily gave me an infection, but I have to wear, I have to bandage up every day so that it doesn't like leak all over by clothing or bedding. And from the, from the, the hormones and blockers, um, I've been experiencing some joint pains, mainly in my, my arms, my legs, and my back. And uh, yep. I, I still have issues with my, my urinary tract. I have to use the restroom pretty frequently. And I didn't even know that this was possible. This is like a pretty huge quality of life issue that I'm experiencing and I'm just, I'm just not really getting any help for it. And on top of that, 
I'm, I do, I do hate to speak about it, but I'm experiencing sexual dysfunction at the age of 18. That's something that women usually go through when when they're in their 40s to 50s. Right, right. How was I supposed to know? What a courageous young woman. And you have to ask, where was a doctor who had taken a Hippocratic oath to do their patients no harm? If you listen to her story, she's sympathetic towards her parents. Because one of the things that they heard and one of the things that many parents hear when they're talking to a doctor about gender dysphoria, which gender dysphoria is just the idea that you are in the wrong body sexually. Now, let me just say, throughout history, through uh, modern psychology, this has been diagnosed as a, as a mental pathology, a, a mental problem. Last week I shared that for the first time since the United States was doling out frontal lobotomies, we are now treating psychological conditions with medical surgeries. Let me tell you, frontal lobotomies where the, an area of the brain is scrambled so that someone that is dealing with some kind of psychological disorder is rendered to be pliable and can be put away into some kind of institution. That's barbaric. It's barbaric. And the whole United States has deemed that to be so, so that these kinds of institutions no longer exist. You can see them. They're, dot, they're even in our own community, the, the, the ruins of places like this. Now, I believe that when we see the bodies littered across society, as Europe has already begun to do, they are second-guessing even supplying these kinds of surgeries to minors. But let me tell you, it's happening at places like Duke University. It's happening at children's hospitals, Boston, different places like that. It's a tragedy. She stood before the Texas legislature. She said, I'm the canary in the coal mine. She was one of the youngest to be transitioned. She met, she's met some others that were transitioned even younger than she was. And then today it's proliferated so that you can go on Instagram or TikTok and you can find transition justice where there's all kinds of survivors that are coping with the ramifications of not being able to have children now. Uh, complications, situations, conditions where their body is attacking them and they will be dependent on drugs for the rest of their life. Listen, that we are not treating patients. We are creating cli uh, clients for pharmaceutical companies and medical companies. It is a tragedy. It's a tragedy. One of the things Chloe said is, she said, how, how, how was I supposed to know? She was sympathetic to her parents because her parents had heard from the doctor, you can either have a dead daughter or you can have a son. How would she know? Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26, the scripture says, Then God said, let us make human beings in our image. The plural pronoun here is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Present, together, working at creation, creating mankind in his image. To be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. This thought occurred to me this last week is that we're just coming out of and we are in an era of fatherlessness. How much crime is there because young men and young women 
don't have fathers. We've engineered so much that has deconstructed the nuclear family. We've worked against that. We've seen it as patriarchal. We've seen it as harmful. No, it's from the Lord. It's from the Lord. And so here we are now. The attack strategy number one is an attack on the home and fatherlessness. And now here we are in 2023 and we're talking about childlessness. The enemy has assaulted our seed. The enemy has assaulted our sons and daughters. How would we know? Listen, God has shared with us. And God blessed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply. What we're doing right now is we're celebrating a full-on assault on the first command given to man by God. We're celebrating a full-on assault on the identity that was given to man by God. We're celebrating a full-on assault on the image bearers God created. We're celebrating a full-on assault on the character sufficiency and supremacy of God. We're declaring that there is a God and we are him. This grand social, psychological, medical, and theological experiment is not ending well. Moms and dads, I just want you to know that from this pulpit and from the office of the church, from the prayer closets of our church families, mothers and fathers, the old saints that have paved the way for us, and and then young leaders that we have rising up. We call them Jesus Revolution 2.0. You know this squad of young men and young women that are dotting the landscape of our schools all over the city, and they're showing up to church with big old gigantic Bibles, pens, and highlighters, and they're seeking God for their generation. Here's our commitment to you, is that we will lift you up in the power of God, in the power of his word, in the power of the Holy Spirit to stand against the schemes of the enemy in this day. And I want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. So if your son is giving you a hard time at home and, and, and he's telling you how something is going to be, whether it's on this topic or on some other topic, listen, we are praying for you as a godly mother or a godly father to you, for you to tell your children how they should live and how they should be raised And you do according to the word that you would train up a child in the way they should go so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. That you invoke the word of God where it says that children are like arrows in the hands of a strong warrior. Mothers and fathers, place your children, pull them out of the quiver, place them on the bow, place tension on their life, aim them at the target and release them, trusting God to do what he said he would do. You know how I preach? Is nothing new. I've had people all week saying, you know, Pastor, I'm praying for you. People from outside the church mostly, I'm praying for you. I know this has to be a hard topic. This is what we do every week. We open up the Word of God. We, and this is what you should be doing in your home. Open up the Word of God. Lock your knees. Stiffen your spine. Let your heart pour out for your family. And take them to the throne of God in the power of His Word. Because this is what changes lives. It doesn't make any sense to me how there are pastors all over the place that feel like they have to hide parts of the Bible and innovate the gospel so that people will want to come and eat. Listen, people are hurting and they're hungry and they're thirsty. And it's the job of the ministers. It's a job of people who, who have been given the word of God to share the full gospel of Jesus Christ withholding nothing. How will they be changed if they don't hear? How will they hear if there are no preachers? Pastor, I'm really glad that you're our preacher. Listen, you're preachers too. You're preachers. How many of you love Jesus today? Just go ahead and read. You love Jesus today. Then preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach it in your home. You know, put a bumper sticker on your car. Watch how you drive though. Put a bumper sticker on your car and preach the gospel. You know, don't be afraid. Be instant in season and out of season. At the Waffle House, you know, at the grocery store, wherever it is you go. Share Jesus at all times, in word and in deed. Ephesians 6, verse 13, Paul says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. After you've done everything that you know to do in this 
season with God's word, then you stand. This is the awesome thing. Listen, after you've done everything you know to do, let God do what only God can do. You are not responsible for fixing anybody. You are responsible to be faithful to Jesus and to be faithful to your family and to be faithful to your neighbors, to love your God and to love your city. And if you will do that, then God will do what he can do. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? It's not on you for the results. It's on you to be faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith. Be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. Stand in love. Yeah, but pastor, I, I think we need to be a more loving church. I mean, what does that mean? Honestly, what does that mean? Because I feel like we're a loving church. We've given millions of pounds of food away. We clothe and feed the widow and the orphan. Um, thank you for all you do for our children in our children's homes in Cambodia and the children's homes that we support in Guatemala and Honduras and around the world here in the United States. I'm so thankful for the way that you care for each other and, and things that are not even programs of the church. Thank you for all of the things that we will never know about when you saw someone that was hungry and you fed them, you saw someone that was naked and you clothed them, you saw the, someone that was in prison and you visited them. Thank you. For as you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto Jesus. Thank you for being a loving church. Pastor, we need to be a, 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 more, a more truthful church. We really need to tell it like it is. Listen, let me just say something really quickly. First of all, you can't love people if you don't tell them the truth. And if you tell them the truth and you don't love them, you've done nothing for them. Listen, we aren't in the love camp and we're not in the truth camp. We're in the Jesus camp, speaking the truth in love. Amen. Aren't you thankful that God withholds none of it from us? Would you bless him? Because he's the one that does this work. Amen. <clears throat> Bottom line, don't bow, stand. Say that with me. Don't bow, stand. Hey, I would say this, don't retreat, stand. I would say, don't faint, stand. Don't hate, stand. Don't lie, stand. Don't make excuses, instead stand. Don't forget who you are, instead stand. Don't give up on your kids, stand. Don't doubt the word of God, stand. Don't get bitter. Don't grow tired. Stand. Because if you will stand and you won't faint, you will reap a harvest. Listen, mama, listen to me, daddy. I don't know what's going on in your family. I don't know what's going on in your marriage. I don't know what's going on in your finances. But you be patient and be faithful to the Lord and let him work it out. God is able. Amen. God is able. You need to know that today. He is able. And he will do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or think. Yeah, but pastor, it's not happening like I want it to. Let God work it out. Don't second guess God. Yeah, but do you know what my family is involved in? Do you know what my loved one is involved in? Listen, you don't worry about that. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep loving them. Keep being faithful to the Lord, faithful to them. God will work it out. But pastor, I have been trying to get in the word. I'm battling with an addiction. You battle that addiction as long as you have to battle it. If you have to be in this altar every single week, holding on to the horns of the altar, asking God for deliverance, you keep loving Jesus and ask him for deliverance in your life, but don't quit. Listen, I'm not gonna look down on you. If you come in and act in a certain way, you're dealing with something, listen, I'm just saying, hang in there, keep going after Jesus. He will not give up on you if you don't give up on him. Amen. Amen. Now, standing is not just about our own personal lives, but today we're being forced to stand in a number of ways. You know, we're having to learn how to stand on this particular issue, especially at work. Have you noticed that? 
Like some of you may be getting directives from your employer that you need to be using your pronouns and your signature um, line on your email account. This is happening right now. What do I do with that? Don't bow. Stand. Don't bow. Stand. I mean, I, I know we're giving corporations a really hard time, and some of them deserve a hard time. And, you know, I'm, I'm really heartbroken that Target has lost $25 billion this year. I'm, I'm so saddened by that right now. And uh, Bud Light has lost even more. And, uh, you know, I, I thank you for your boycott of, tar- of Target. Um, I wish there's some of you that still need to boycott Bud Light, though. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, uh, we're... No, Pastor, I switched brands. No, that, see, that was what I was. We're going we're to talk about that in another sermon, right? Look, like, I think about these companies. These companies are really facing major challenges because. This statue is being rolled out in boardrooms and corporations, and the CEOs are being told to bow. And if they don't, there will be financial punishment for them, or there will be sweeteners. If you do bow, then we will give you this. Is anyone familiar with the human rights campaign? By any chance, if you are, just raise your hand, human rights campaign. I have a logo here. You you may notice this. This logo kind of shows up. Is anybody familiar with this? Anyone? Okay, so the Human Rights Campaign has an agenda and provides a social credit score for corporations. It's called a CEI, a Corporate Equality Index. And then their companies are graded based on their policy, their, their, their activism within the company. And so there are large investment firms like BlackRock, BlackRock that are hanging out there. And if you score high on this... CEI, then your company will have investment or will have investment withdrawn. Now imagine you're a CEO of a company and 20% of your company uh, is supported by one single investor and that money is pulled, what would that do to you? In, in fact, I was, <clears throat> I was learning this week from what I understand that uh, Cracker Barrel, uh, you know, of course they just came out with their, with their campaign but Cracker Barrel just received a very substantial investment by BlackRock while celebrating their corporate equality index as put out by human rights campaign. It's really interesting stuff. It's worth reading because it's a real challenge that corporate executives are facing right now. And it's not only the CEI, but there's also an MEI Are you familiar familiar with the MEI, the Municipal Equality Index? It's also put out towards governments. And so you can go and you can go to Human Rights Campaign and you can see all of the cities, all of the major cities in America listed by Human Rights Campaign and what their index is. The number one uh, MEI score, top rated score in Alabama is Birmingham. Number two is Montgomery. And then right behind Montgomery, is mobile. Some of these things are common sense things that that might be there, you know, and then some of it is obviously activism that's placed right up against the best interests of the community. Like I think about the desire to roll out drag queens performing in Cathedral Square right in front of the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, what we call the cathedral, which is what Cathedral Square is named after. Why is there a desire to have grown men, old men, in dresses, appropriating women's makeup? Listen, it's crazy, right? If I was here preaching in blackface, would you think that that's racist? Is there any, I mean, just really quickly, is, would, that, would that be bigoted? Would that be racist of me? Okay, would it be inappropriate? Would that be considered a cultural appropriation? Yeah, it's not right. But how is it that men in woman face can show up and dance in front of the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in public in front of families where children walk around? I I don't understand the fixation here. Well, for one 
things like this improve uh, municipalities' equality index. And these pressures are happening all over the country. Hey, would you do me a favor? And would you put on your prayer list to pray for your leaders? Pray for your leaders. Don't you know that we have some really good leaders in Mobile? Do you know that? Like, I'm not here to give anybody grief. I'm not here to make life more difficult on anyone. But let me tell you, our, our national leaders, our state leaders, our county leaders, our city leaders are facing tremendous pressures. And listen, I just want you to know, I'm at the front of the line in praying for our leaders. I don't care what your political affiliation is. I don't care, you know, what logo they're wearing. I am committed to praying for our leaders. Many of them are my friends. I'm speaking cleanly. I'm, I'm talking to them. I'm lifting them up in prayer. And I'm believing that God is going to help us. How many of you would join me in praying for our leaders? Come on, would you just... Thank you. I want to share one of our challenges here. Let me show you the Visit Mobile Facebook. I'm, I'm not going to get into Memphis. I'm not going to get into that. But this is a post that was put out by the Visit Mobile Facebook page this week. This is funded by your tax dollars, county and city taxes. You paid for this message. You, pay, you know when you put a, a political advertisement and you say this message is paid for by, okay, you paid for this. Let me just tell you that. Here's how the message reads. Welcome to our vibrant and love-filled destination. On Friday, June 9th, Mobile's Pride Month celebration kicks off at Loda Art Walk. Enjoy live music vendors, a pride parade. Hey, guys, we want you to enjoy a, a pride parade, which, by the way, will be led by three strong men dressed in woman face, and they will make their way around to the, our historic cathedral where they will perform, okay? Now, just really quickly, only 29% of America believes that drag queens doing story hour with kids is acceptable. I'm thinking Mobile, Alabama. I'm just thinking. Am I, am I going out on a limb here? Am I, am I going? I mean, is this the, this is the Bible Belt, right? I mean, and, and, and whether you're Republican or Democrat, this is a very family-centered community. Am, am I right about that? Am I, okay. And then, and, and then, but this is what we are going to promote. 20, Rasmussen said 29% find it acceptable. I think it's much lower in Mobile, Alabama. I believe it is. I'm just thinking th this must be a mistake. I, I'm thinking this is probably a mistake. I, I would like to give a benefit of the doubt to visit Mobile that this is an accident. This is, this is an oversight or a misunderstanding with what our taxpayers want to do. I do know that I prayed the invocation at the city council this week. There were news cameras there, and then some people were interviewed. And in um, an AL.com uh, news article, this is what the CEO of Visit Mobile said. Let me, let me just can, can, go ahead and flip to that next slide. The president and CEO with Visit Mobile said the LGBTQ community contributes a lot to our community. How many of you believe that our people do contribute a lot to our community. All people in Mobile, a lot of people doing some great things. There's some people in our community that are tearing things up. There's no question. People going to jail and that sort of thing. A lot of really great people, including our LGBT community, that are doing some really good things in the community. And that Mobile as a destination for travel aims to promote a welcoming, safe, and inclusive environment. Inclusive means everyone and, exclude, and includes the LGBT community, Clark said which I appreciate him editorializing on this. I don't know this is the job of Visit Mobile, though. We will promote everyone. I think if you exclude anyone, you're not inclusive. That's our position, and we will continue to promote Mobile. Thank you. Thank you for promoting Mobile. That's what Visit Mobile should do, right? Promote Mobile and continue to promote pride. Listen, I'm, I'm just, this is me speaking. I'm thinking out loud here, but I'm thinking the purpose of Visit Mobile, I read the about section, the purpose is to promote Mobile as a destination for tourists, not to use our tax money for LGBTQ activism. You know, actually, I was thinking about it. it's a pretty nice arrangement that a particular ideology that espouses a set of beliefs can apply to the city for funding. 
to promote this particular brand of lifestyle. I'm wondering what would happen if Pathway Church applied to the city and to the county, to the county commissioners and to the city councilors, saying we wanted our budget to be funded almost exclusively by city and county tax money. Do you think somebody would be upset about that? Anybody? Maybe the LGBTQ community. Maybe the truckers. Maybe the atheists. Maybe the Lions Club. Right? There's all kinds of people that might object to that. Here's what I think. I think we ought to pay our own bills. And we ought not to leverage the tax dollars, the hard-earned money that could have gone to your kids' school uniforms, that muffler you need to get fixed, the, the extra room you need on your house, or your first house, instead of funding activism, oftentimes it's coming from agendas and agencies outside of our city. I'm just putting that out there. And that stuff is challenging to deal with. But we got to stand. We can't bow. And we got to stand at home. Father and mother, when this agenda shows up with your children, love your children, love Jesus, bring the word to them, be a parent, be a parent. But my son wants to wear nail polish. Your son was just pulling the heads off of Barbie dolls like last week. Just lit a G.I. Joe on fire. Kicked the cat. Won't clean his room. Won't go to bed when he's supposed to go to bed. Can't hardly get him to take a bath. Let me, let me just give you some good wisdom. Be the parent. Be the parent. Tell them what to do. Train them up in the way they should go. Listen, if this agenda, if the transactivism agenda had been in place during Little House on the Prairie, Laura Ingalls Wilder would have had her surgery a long time ago. Just think about it. When I was little, I wanted to be a pirate. Thank God nobody cut my leg off and gave me an eye patch. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. <laughs> Work at it at home. Don't bow, stand. Let me tell you another thing. Don't hate love. Because you can speak the truth without being a jerk. Right now, the problem is we think there's certain truth and certain opinions that are more equal than others. And some should be spoken and some should be platformed and some should be financed by the, uh, by the government while others you know, should be silenced and called, be called bigotry. Listen, 2,000 years of Christianity, which has built hospitals all over the world, children's homes all over the world, advanced literacy all over the world, has advanced the arts all over the world, has invented all kinds of uh, scientific advancements all over the world, is not suddenly become hate speech. Jesus laid down his life, and he took it up, and there are now billions of people all over this planet that are not bigots, but they're standing in truth. Don't be afraid to stand. Stand at home. And when you stand, love people. Don't hate love. Don't neglect, protect. Pastor, what, how are we to do that? Listen, because everybody has a place here in our community except people who are abusing children. People who are grooming children does not have a place in our community. You know, repeatedly I've written something like that and, or I've said something like that and I've had people say, yes, but priests are some of the biggest abusers, are the biggest groomers in the world. It's a very easy answer for me. Listen, I don't care what team you're on. If you're abusing children, you belong in jail. Teachers, people in the LGBTQ community, pastors, cops, everybody. Protect our kids. Stop targeting our kids. I don't understand it. What's the fixation with reading books to little kids while you're in woman face, dressed up, painted up, cut up like a woman, how come I never see this in the nursing home? That's what I want to know. Why, why don't you want to be around the old folks? What's the fixation with getting around kids? Come on, man. Mobile, South Haven, Foley. Come on, man. Wake up. Wake up. Come on. Get our stuff together. It's not cute. It's not cute. You're not, you're not more enlightened if you haul your kids off to that. Stop using your kids as props and introducing them to some kind of social experiment. There is a payday for this. Don't neglect, protect, and don't fall away. 
repent. Daniel chapter 3. We find ourselves at a statue that's been rolled out and people were called to bow. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall, 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. Please stand with me, would you? So all these officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald shouted, People of all races and nations and language, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, when you see the rainbow flag, when you hear the trumpet blast, the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship the king's gold statue. Bow to the ground, and you better use the right pronoun. Bow to the ground, and you better affirm anything that comes your way. You better adopt a new ideology to affirm what this one person said. This one gender out of supposedly a spectrum of a hundred different genders. Don't you dare say that there's just two genders. You better bow. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. I got to pause here for a second. I got to tell you something. I, I see repeatedly. Whew, I, used to, I remember when I was considered a young pastor. I'm still hanging in there, though. I'm, I'm still hanging in there. The kids trying to update me with new shoes and all that stuff. You know, you know how it goes. Somebody said, Pastor, are you, are you from New York? Because the way you walk, you got like a New York ditty bop. No, that's a bad left knee. It's a bad left knee. Just how I, how I do. Let me tell you, I've been doing pastoral ministry for almost three decades, which is crazy to think. Here's what I've seen over and over. God-fearing mothers and fathers who have brought their kids to church and been raised in the church, have been brought to church their entire life. And their kid comes along and falls for some kind of ideology. And rather than leaning in and parenting a very difficult, very challenging, very challenging situation, especially when there's social contagion and it's the cool thing to do, Instead of standing on God's word, in order to be affirming, the parent changes their ideology and steps over with the child. And I see whole families flip. I've seen pastors do it. I've seen, I've seen pastors just come out and change their whole thing that they've given their whole life to because suddenly, well, I just need to be faithful to my kid. No, you need to be faithful to your God. To your God. And if you'll be faithful to your God, then you'll be faithful to your kid. But if you abandon God in order to be faithful to God, not only will you lose your God, you will lose your child. You will lose your faith. You don't have to be rude or nasty to your children. Your grown children, well, I'm not going to have anything to do with them. No, you love your children. You love your children. They're 50 years old. You keep loving your children. Well, pastor, what do I do? They want to come over and stay at the house. No, they can't. They cannot come over and sleep in the house. Is, is that fair to say? You, okay. Don't stop loving your family. Don't stop loving your family. You don't have to pretend like you don't know them. If somebody has a problem with you loving your child, don't worry about that. But don't go sit on the front row of their wedding. You, you hear what I'm saying? Somebody, talk to, talk to your pastor here. I'm going to have to come down and lay hands on some folks. You hear what I'm saying? Don't, don't go be the best man. You will never see me performing a gay wedding. I won't do it. I won't, I won't do it. Why, Pastor, that's hateful? No, because I believe in the Word of God, and I believe there's an eternity. And so you can have one minute, one hour of avoiding conflict and lose your soul. What does it matter if a man gains the whole world gains everyone's appreciation and loses their soul. Now, here's what I pray. That God will put their hands over our children and God will keep our children. God will bring revival. 
Maybe the problem is, is that there's a bunch of preachers that quit preaching the word of God. Now, I, now I don't think it's just that there's preachers preaching against the word of God. I think there's some preachers going, I'm not preaching that this Sunday because Brother Smith. You know, he gives really good in the offering. He, no, listen, let me tell you something. I don't care what you give. I don't care what you give. Listen, Pathway Church, we're going to be faithful to the word of God. Be faithful to the word of God. Why? 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 Because it, it changes lives. It changes lives. So they didn't bow. They didn't bow. Some of the astrologers saw it, and they went to the king and informed it on the Jews. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn and all the instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, the three Hebrew boys, whom you've put in charge of the province of Babylon, they pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Pathway Church, listen. Everyone's going to have to make a choice to stand or bow. Nobody's going nobody's to get to skip it. Let me tell you, if you, if you will make the decision to stand now in obedience to God now, God will take care of you. Or if you bow now, you will also bow in judgment at God's throne. Don't bow, stand. Say it with me, don't bow, stand. I wanna read one more passage and then, and then I wanna pray for us. Jeremiah chapter six, verse 16. This is just before the Babylonian captivity. This is what the Lord says. They, they could have avoided captivity. Let me just say, they could have avoided captivity. Stop at the crossroads and look around. I want to say this to you, Pathway Church. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. These are the words of the Lord. The way forward is looking back. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. Lord, I posted watchmen over you who said, listen for the Lord for the sound of the alarm. But you reply, no, we will, won't pay attention. Therefore, listen to this. All of you nations, take note of my people's situation. Listen, all the earth, I will bring disaster on my people. Why would God bring disaster on people? What will he do? Listen to this. The disaster is the fruit of their own schemes. What is it that God gives us when we sin? He gives us our sin. He gives us our free will. We say, God, I've got this on my own. I've got this all by myself. And God says, okay, you can have it all by yourself. That is the fruit of your own schemes. God doesn't send anyone to hell. God doesn't sentence people to hell. We've chosen hell and the door is locked from the inside. If God was so loving, why would he do? God does not do this. His creation does. Pathway Church, forget about the topic of this message just for a second. Listen, there is a God in heaven that loves you and he created you and we were separated from God and God loved us so much he wanted to bring us back and reconcile us to him. So he gave us his son, born in a manger. He grew in wisdom and in stature according to Luke chapter 2 verse 52 and in favor with God and man. And as he grew, he taught and as he grew, he did miracles. He turned the water into wine. He opened the blinded eye. He caused the lame to walk. He he wept when his friends died and he raised that same friend from the dead. And for doing all of these things, what happened? He was put on trial. He was arrested, put on trial. He was beaten. He was crucified. He was killed. And they threw him in a cave. Let me tell you something. Between the time they took him off the cross in the cave, there was a, a couple men that came and took care of him. One was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a man that was ashamed of God. That he was a religious elite. He snuck to God under the cover of night, snuck to Jesus to talk to him first great convert that as Jesus is hanging on the cross, this great man, member of the Sanhedrin would come and take care of the body of Christ and put him in a grave, a grave that could not hold him because three days later, our Christ arose from the dead. He appeared to 500 witnesses. He ascended as people watch and he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for us. We didn't come in here to bash anybody. We came in here to get close to Jesus. 
Don't bow, stand. Don't bow, stand. Give your heart to Jesus. Don't sin. Love Jesus. Don't quit. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't faint. The Lord loves you. And he died for you. And you are on his mind. You are not too far gone. Your family is not too far gone. He's paying attention to you right now. And he's in this place. Amen. Won't you bless God today? Amen. Hey, would you lift your hands to the Lord right now? Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for working in our lives. And thank you for why would you waste your time and lay down your life and go through so much pain for us? Lord, we thank you for doing it. We, we honor you for doing it. Father, thank you for offering us salvation and redemption. Transform us and heal us today. Father, there are needs in this house and we ask that you administer to us. Bless our city. Bless our nation. Lord, your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Lord, if we'll seek your face, if we will repent, Father, you will hear from heaven. You will heal our land. You will forgive our sins. Father, we pray that you would do this in our lives today, that our hearts and our lives will be focused on you. And Lord, we'll thank you for that today. With every head bowed, every eye closed, you say, Pastor, I'm not in relationship with Jesus. I want to be in relationship with Jesus, the one who laid down his life for me. I want God to forgive me of my sins right now, right where you are. Just slip up your hand really quickly all over this place if that's you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Up in the balcony, God bless you. God bless you at our campuses right now. I'm believing that God is touching people's lives. Listen, the Bible says, if we confess our sons, sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're gonna pray a prayer of repentance. The whole church is gonna pray. And if you are believing in your heart that Jesus is your Lord, you're confessing, of, uh, confessing your sins, God is forgiving you. You're made right with him. Your name is written in his book and you just follow Jesus from here on out and God's gonna do a good work. And you pray this prayer with me all over this house. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice he made. Crucified, buried, resurrected for me. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Make me right with you. My Lord and my God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on all over this place. Let's bless the Lord.